Nexus is the first game in VR for Assassin's Creed. So it's the first time that you can play Assassin's Creed in first person. It's the first time you can play multiple assassins in the same game. So across three different settings, three different assassins, and the full range of iconic AC actions like Hidden Blade, Stealth, Combat, Leap of Faith, Parkour, Climbing, Throwing Knives, all these types of weapons, the Tomahawk of Connor, all of that stuff we put in the game because we really wanted to make it a true AC experience. Parkour is obviously one of the iconic AC actions that we think players are going to be really excited to do in Nexus. Running across the rooftops in large open urban areas is something that really is so fundamental to the brand that I didn't feel like we could compromise on it. So the team has done some amazing technical wizardry to allow the player to basically approach all these maps from 360 degrees. You can see it, you can climb it, you can parkour it. So from Venice to Greece to Boston and even new areas like Newport for Connor, um, they're all what we call open map environments. The player can traverse on the ground, scale the walls, climb the rooftops. When you look at the world in Nexus, you see basically hand holds, 90 degree surfaces that you can grab. So you're actually using your hands, you're pulling yourself up the side of the building. There's flinging, so you can actually throw yourself up sideways, even backwards, like across a street, which is really cool to do. There's a sort of feet to feet jumps where you're landing and you keep going. Then there's feet to grab jumps, so you jump, you have to grab mantle and, and keep going. Or there's, you know, these, these swing bars, you're, you're sprinting, you're parkouring, you jump, you grab the swing bar, you do this gesture, you know, just like you would in real life, which is what VR is all about, right? Trying to simulate the actual experience, and then you keep going in that flow. It is a stealth first game, sneaking around, peeking around corners with even something as simple as like grabbing the corner of a building and pulling your camera, your head over and kind of leaning and peeking to see an enemy. We've even built in things like cracks and holes in the walls where you can kind of peek through there and it's a use of head tracking there, but you feel really sneaky and you're spying on the guards in the other room. In the environments, you'll have dynamic objects, a vase, whatever. You can pick them up, you throw it. It'll crash on the ground and make a sound and distract a guard that way, and you're actually doing the physical throw yourself. One of the features that we've had, or we've always been really excited about, is the whistling feature. So you do this with a gesture, you make a ring with your hands, and you bring it to your mouth area, and you know, we're tracking your hand position, and you hear the assassin whistle, and that will call the guard over, and you can stab them in the bush and pull them in, or whatever it is that you want to do. The Hidden Blade, I would say, is the most important feature in the game, really, if I had to pick one. You pull the top trigger on the controller and you flick your wrist open and the blade comes out. Everybody who tried it, it was always their favorite thing in the game. As we know, Connor and Ezio both have dual Hidden Blades, so we featured that in the game. Um, but what is really neat about Nexus is this is the first time that players will get to play Cassandra with her Hidden Blade. And she has just the one blade because we want to, you know, be true to the story, true to the canon, true to the character. Well, there's obviously combat and you can try and fight your way out of situations. It's really blocking, attacking, and what we call opportunity windows. So when you block, an enemy will come and swing their weapon at you and you need to physically put your sword or tomahawk in the way of it and block just like you would imagine it happening in real life. We want to create this sense of fighting like a master assassin, but it's going to take time to learn it because you're actually doing your physical gestures and you know having to time things. They all have a primary weapon. Connor has a tomahawk. Ezio and Cassandra both have a sword. They all have some kind of ranged weapon. Connor and Cassandra both have bows, and Ezio has a one-handed crossbow. They all have throwing knives and smoke bombs. So you feel familiar and comfortable playing these assassins with the sort of core weapon set that they have, but there's also some nice specialization of, of who they are. You come in from a rooftop, you air assassinate the first enemy, take your throwing knife to finish the second one, pull out your bow, take down the third one, and then draw your sword or tomahawk and engage the last one in combat and finish with a hidden blade lunge. There's even some additional nuances um, that are part of it. So for example, if you're sprinting, you're your air assassination distance will be increased. So you can sprint to the edge of a rooftop, hit the button and fly further and have even a more dramatic long jump kind of kill. Even using the bow as you jump into the, to the air assassination, that slow-mo that we turn on can give you enough time to fire an arrow in, you know, in mid-air like a, like a badass master assassin.
So the idea is that you're an elite player hacker that is undercover for the Brotherhood and is now working for Abstergo. But at the end of the day, the biggest, most fundamental pillar of the game that we want to deliver to fans is becoming a master assassin, right? Physically stepping into the shoes of these characters and performing all those actions you watch your avatar do over the years, physically doing it yourself. And that is the real fantasy of Nexus, is actually being a master assassin yourself.